So big thank you to everybody who, uh, one, looked at the video of the new Missing Link plugin, two, that asked questions, or three, that bought, or waiting to buy for uh, a little more explanation on the product. So uh, it might be a long minute. So I'll try to keep it under 10, 10 minutes, but this will explain the, vi uh, the plugin and its use. Um, first and foremost, I guess the job properties that come with, you'll have the ability to create proposals with it. And in that proposal, you're going to want to put scope of work, qualifications, uh, plan information, addendum information. Um, that way, when you have that proposal, it's tied to a date and um, an addendum list so that they can't come back and say, hey, there's a new set of plans, you didn't bid it, you know, type of thing. You say, no, I bid this set of plans, and this is what we're bidding. Um, even more important is this labor here. Now, this is the only thing that's gonna be controlled by this job property is the labor. And the average crew rate is, let's say you have uh, five guys that is your normal crew, and it's $250 per hour for that crew with all your burden and everything else. No markup, just burden. Uh, 52, it works out to 50 bucks an hour. So you could change that right here and it'll keep your whole job and change all your labor. And same for the markup. If you want to mark it up 45%, uh, then you can do it here. Okay, and of course your material tax rate. Okay, so that's all that the job properties are doing. Um, you can... Uh, well, let's just kind of get into it and talk about what comes with it. So with the plugin, I'll just start here on the right. Um, you're going to get two sets of folders. Um, this this plugin is heavily uh, dependent on organizing your bid with folders. So whatever you name your folders uh, is what will show up in your proposals, your requests for materials, uh, things like that. So I put in, you know, the, the some, uh, well, that's out of place. I put in some... <clears throat> CSI code um, divisions, so you can use those if you want. You can change them yourself. You can pre-make them. Um, and then there's some generic. Okay, one of the neat things about these all these folders is they're going to carry a cost total for anything that's in that folder and a price total. So if we wanted to see what the concrete uh, flat work total was, we could go to estimating, and it's going to have a price total of 15000 If you wanted to see your cost, total you can make um, cost total visible let's see there it is and so then you can see what your cost total is here so that's a useful tool don't use these numbers down at the bottom ever uh, because it's basically tripling everything that's in that column and it's just totally useless so these would be the ones you'd want to use um, another thing you want to use uh, a lot of let's go back home is you're going to use these takeoff properties now i'm including metric takeoff properties for some of our, our friends up in canada or overseas that you know use plan swift australia and those places good day mate uh the the uh, bad humor sorry anyways uh so these all these job properties are going to have a production rate so what you want to do is say okay how many people are my crew for this task so let's say i was doing a pier block for concrete, um, you know, some kind of a, a post and pier type of situation. So I'm gonna only put two people in there and they really should be able to do uh, one an hour. Um, let's say they can do uh, two an hour. Okay, so when I count these, these blocks or these piers, it's gonna give me um, a total of eight. So at that point, I, I can already have these already pre-made or I can build them as I go. Now. You have a choice of using assemblies or no assemblies. It doesn't really matter. It's it's whatever your specific style of uh, plans with creating. If you use assemblies, use the material assemblies and these labor assemblies uh, because they have some coding in there that you're going to want to keep to make your uh, plug-in work properly. For now, we'll just go ahead and put that in there. We're, we'll get rid of this material assembly that came with it. Uh, so you can see that two guys are doing two an hour uh, and so that builds up to basically one hour each so if you wanted to change that you could or you could say hey they're gonna have to do three each an hour and then that'll decrease the uh, production or the hours on there 
if it's going to have a piece of equipment, let's say you have to auger or something like that, you just drag that in and you got your, um, let's, let's just go auger. And here's where you can put in your markup for that particular item if you want to mark it up. And this is a cost per day. So I'm just going to go ahead and say $75 a day for this. And what it's going to do is figure out how many days and round up. So it's going to take the total hours divided by the number of crews. So you have kind of a crew hour situation. And it'll actually rent that or buy that or use that equipment for the whole day. Okay. Uh, some people uh, demand that's kind of what you want. I like it by the hour. But um, again, this is for you guys. You can build it any way you want. Now the materials kind of come in neat because everybody has been developing their own materials. And everybody has been... Um, using plan swift so if i want to go to concrete and let's go count takeoffs let's drag in a round column footing okay or a concrete pier let's use a concrete pier so we drag that in there and we're going to say that this is two feet by two feet by three feet that works for me um 10 percent waste is good concrete's probably more than 95 dollars an hour uh, or you know a, a cubic yard and then let's mark this up 15 percent all right, so now what we've done is we've taken this assembly that we've made so easily, and now we've been able to come up with a unit price and a price total or a cost total each. All right, but some of the other stuff that's going to have to happen in here, is, as this goes to uh, there, you're going to want to see how that looks in your pr uh, proposal letter. So you can see I didn't put that in a folder. Okay, so what we want to go do is go back and let's put this in a folder. Um, let's put it in concrete flat work. Okay, I'm going to have to reload the job just real quick so it'll change the pricing. So now when I go back, I have concrete flat work is one of my folders, concrete flat work rebar, uh, concrete base rock. You don't have to name it anything you don't want. You can put all this stuff in one folder, say concrete, and it'll come up with a price for that in your proposal. If you need a report with line items, these reports come with the plugin that you see here on the left. Uh, so it, that's a real nice feature. You can say you can give them quantities and a total price if you want. Here's your qualifications, the plans, uh, things like that that you wanted to put on there. Um, let me see what else. Oh, if you want to do material quote, you can choose it by folder. Um, you can say, hey, I want to ch close out the rebar or I want to just do the rebar folder only. Excuse me, I'll go here. And select that and now I can send this out for a quote for rebar and when it comes back I can change my price uh, right here and let's say it came in at 75 cents a pound so that'll change your bid um, we have the normal bid cost reports now the ones that I like um, I made will show the total overhead and profit as well as your the standard gross margin um, so this is kind of a neat little tool that PlanSwift doesn't offer. Um, you can have reports by takeoff item, uh, takeoff item report with markup. Um, you can have more materials reports, labor reports, uh, production rate. You can see what's your number of crew, uh, eight people, how many, how many do they have to do in that time? They have to do so many square feet or so many meters. Uh, equipment report if you want to see what the equipment is what the cost is going to be you can adjust the pricing here as you guys know you can adjust it let's say the track skid steer um, you want to cut that in half and, and go 175 okay that'll change your prices that changes your proposal it changes your reports it changes all that so that's all the stuff that you get inside of uh, the plugin I'm gonna go back home and finish this up so you're not waiting around so also got some uh, square f or, uh, subcontractors that you can drag and drop. So it should be anything that you have done <clears throat> for materials that you've developed yourself that creates a total and a price, that type of stuff. Anything that PlanSwift has created or anything you want to create in the future. Uh, it allows you to do proposals. It allows you to organize your bids per, per, for proposals. If you want uh, to shop with materials, you can do that. If you want to have a labor report, you can do that. If you want to change all your labor in one fell swoop, you can do that. Also, if you want to change your uh, markup, let's go markup. You want to 
uh, go right here, go grid view. So yeah, all my material I want to make, um, uh, that's not the best place to do it. Sorry. Let's go to materials, all parts with markup. Okay. So all my materials, I'm at 20%. Let's say I want to make all my materials 10% uh, markup. I'll go here, shift, right click, fill with 10. And when it does that, it's going to change all your prices and everything. So it's it's a real neat system. It allows you guys that you've been working on for so long to try to create an estimating system that actually works and functions that you can get reports out of just by using your uh, parts, plan swift parts that they've created, either metric or standard, uh, and create proposals, and all kinds of things like that. Thanks for watching. Sorry it took so long. It's an 11-minute video, but I think this will help explain things.